first response to this canal closure pakistan built brbd canals because these canals were shut so they diverted some water from chenab into ravi and for that this brbd canal which also is very famous for the war of 1965 it served as a defense line for pakistan in 1949 Pakistan built Thal Canal. This was also in response to this thing. Now Thal Canal had another history. Before the British left, they created Kalabagh Barrage here. But the canals which were to take off from Kalabagh Barrage, they were not in- implemented uh, before the partition. And then the British left. The barrage was there, and the designs were there. So Pakistan. immediately started building those canals because the designs were there the barrage was there and this served two purposes one that there were so many migrant families muhajireen uh, who moved from india into pakistan in 1947 they were allotted lands in this area and also this was in response to uh, the lost irrigated lands because of the canal closures by india so this this was thal canal in 1954 pakistan built balleki and sulaiman ki link canal again to uh, divert some water from ravi river into satluj river and uh, at the same time in the same time frame india built this rajasthan canal this was a big canal and this is where after stopping pakistan's water india was diverting its waters they were building more canal systems in 1955 again more canals came up and one of the most important thing that happened in 1955 was this kotli barrage it was built and this canal network was added in pakistan again this was just like uh, thal canal it was built on priority and so many uh, families which migrated from india were settled in this part of the world 1956 more canal came marala ravi ring canal and feeder canal now again pakistan was actually what what pakistan was doing pakistan was bringing water from the western rivers here to the eastern rivers where there was no shortage of water because india was diverting all the waters into its own irrigation schemes and then this was the big daddy of all the rajasthan canal here you can see the magnitude of this project this is what india wanted to do they wanted to do this thing in 1947 and they declared it that they, this is what we are going to do and we are going to shut your rivers and they kept doing it and our response was just to keep building the river linking canals now in 1958 to 1961 there were some major projects done and here the aim of those diversion projects was to divert waters of ravi byas and satluj into rajasthan that big large canal network they built the network and now they they built the structures to divert those waters 1959 this was on the pakistani side we built some more canals over here so if you look at the two countries what they are doing they are just doing one canal project on this side and another on this side one this side another this side one this side another this side this what's going on then in 1960 pakistan and india signed indus water treaty this was the situation before the treaty and 1962 was the time when we built this gudu barrage this was another big barrage in sindh now we have three barrages in sindh 1965 again we had a link canal this was in 66 bisdwab canal then again link canals in 67 then comes to 70s tonsa panni link canal so you see we are doing a lot of link canal projects again ravi canal this ravi canal was in india this was also in india now this is this is a very interesting project satluj jumna link canal after diverting all the waters that india could divert from the eastern rivers it still had surplus water in those rivers and india had a mentality that this water should not be flowing into pakistan so what they did they dig a canal and they connected it to jamna river which is somewhere here and jamna river ultimately drains into ganga river and ganga river ultimately drains into bay of bengal So instead of that surplus water flowing over back into river Satluj and passing through Pakistan and going into Indus Delta they just diverted it to flow into Bay of Bengal 
without using it rather than letting it flow through pakistan so that's the kind of mentality that we have to deal with today and it is quite interesting that yamuna river runs right through the city of delhi which is a city of about 30 million people it's about the size of karachi and yamuna river is running right through the middle of that city yet the drinking water of delhi part of it is coming from satluj river imagine a city with a river is receiving water from another river and the two rivers are still flowing so those were the kind of i would say completely unnecessary projects that india undertook just to deny water to pakistan the hur high level canal is one of the latest projects that was done in pakistan this is a canal which takes off from uh, tarbela dam and serves some parts of kbk those people who are from kbk must have known it and today this is the situation we have diversion canals and large dams as well i did not mention about the dams when i was talking all these most mentioning about canal irrigation projects uh, but this is the situation today with all the canals and the dams india has three very large dams if you just have a look at the entire river system this whole area drains at this point into the sea and this is where your indus delta is indus delta once upon a time was one of the richest regions in the world not just within subcontinent one of the richest regions in the world there were ports there were about 24 odd ports in this part karachi was not one of them there were 24 odd ports between what is now district thatta and badi between karachi and the indus border uh, india indian border those two districts they touched the sea and there they had 24 ports and there were more than 600 international shipping companies whose ship would come to these ports and do the trade and this area was so rich with fresh water that rice would grow in this part of the world and all the supply of rice to the northern part was done through indus delta and people from these parts of the world they would travel in boats down to indus delta they would work as laborers in the fields of rich farmers of indus delta to cut the crops and after cutting the crops they would take their share of the crops that was the currency of exchange they would just take a small share of that uh, crop load it in their boats and come up so indus river was being used for navigation by the locals and indus delta was so rich that it was producing food for almost half of the population sitting in this part of the world but after all these interventions not only that these people they starting their own food but these people lost the capacity to produce food if today you go to indus delta more than half of it has been eroded to the sea sea has eaten it away and a system in nature which was sustained by about 220 million acre feet of water per year is now receiving less than 1 million acre feet per year so this this system has been completely destroyed so this was this is this is how you have modified your river system there are so many problems because of this modification we will go and talk about it now indus water treaty is a very interesting and a very historical part of india and pakistan after partition this is 1947 i come back to this map this was the situation you see these are the works in india and these are all the works in pakistan and this was the state of the irrigation system at the time of partition this is when india shuts down your canals so which part of pakistan was actually impacted it is this part when they shut those canals they could only shut the canals they could not divert the rivers because india did not have any capacity of diverting the rivers so when the canal is shut 
the water is flowing into the river and it is still flowing through the land of pakistan only that our farmers cannot take it out because the system to take out the water was up there in india all the water in this part was also coming from india but india did not have any capacity to even shut these canals or to divert these rivers but given indian designs and their declarations that we will not let these three rivers flow into pakistan if india could successfully divert uh, or or develop the capacity to divert river waters not shut the canals but to divert river waters then this area could also have been impacted diplomatically at that point in time what pakistan should have done and it's not that pakistan should have done and nobody was thinking there were quite a few people who actually advised this thing to the government of pakistan that you should keep fighting your case in the international treaties in the international courts that india should not be shutting down these rivers india should not be diverting these rivers because there's an international rule on water and that rule is called prior appropriation prior appropriation means that if i am already doing something from the water somebody sitting upstream should not do anything that disrupts my use because i am already doing it so that's an international law and if we had fought our case on that international law we had a very good proof that we are using this water because our canal irrigation system was on ground and there was no question about that any court could actually dispute the fact that you are not already using it so with that if we had moved forward the situation between india and pakistan would have been completely different but unfortunately we did not follow that case this is what india did when they did this thing on 1st of april when they closed the canals on 4th of may 1948 we signed an inter dominion accord with india and we said okay please release our water we will pay for it and india said okay if if you want to get that water first you build the diversion canals to feed your own canals and until you build the diversion canals we will let you have the, the water in the canals but you will have to pay for it few months later this agreement agreement expired and india again shut the canals and when it again shut the canals pakistan said that i am going to the international court because pakistan did not then have any choice and the moment they said we are going to international court when we said we are going to international court india said okay we will come back to that inter dominion accord and we will keep giving you the water and you will keep paying us so that was the power of international court and our case at that time actually we should have gone to international court but again we stepped back and we said okay okay then keep trying us water so again we kind of i don't know what what the political situations uh, but but this is what we did and india made it clear that they are going to shut these rivers down do what you can 50 to 54 now remember the treaty was signed in 1960 and this is the year 50 to 54 50 to 54 they had already started work on bhagra dam they actually started work on bhagra dam which was a river satluj it was a very large dam it is about the size of the vela dam and they knew that by building this dam they would they would become capable of completely shutting down satluj river flowing into pakistan and this bhagra dam was originally conceived by british back in 1901 or 2 and at that time the province of sindh part of subcontinent they objected that if you build this dam there would be less supply of silt on indus delta and delta could erode so it was more than 100 years ago that people of sindh knew that if silt supply is reduced in indus delta the delta would erode and consequent to the objections of sindh british decided not to build this dam then again in 1920s the suggestion came up that let's go and build dam on river satluj this time a smaller one and sindh again objected 
the british said that we will build you a barrage in new and they built for them sakhar barrage but at the same time they said that we still don't want this dam and the british did not build it they first made a promise that we will build you two more barrages if you let us build these dams and they called them an upper barrage and a lower barrage and they conceived koti barrage and guddu barrage which was one was upstream of sakhar barrage the other one was downstream of sakhar barrage but sind did not agree to it and the dam was not built and then came 1947 and when indian started building this dam they started work on this dam in 1948 now the two countries were separated since again objected to it and now it was pakistan the government of pakistan which should have and could have fought the case in international courts that india should not be allowed to build this dam but somehow the government of pakistan did not do it very seriously and india kept going with this project but because indian knew that this dam is so large that it will take a lot of time to build it and they wanted to divert waters earlier than the dam could be built they decided to build nangal dam which was a smaller one and it was downstream of the actual bhakra dam and this would make them capable of diverting a lot of water from satluj even before this dam is completed and nangal was a small one it was completed in 3 years and this is that water which was diverted to that 160 km long diversion canal which was then linking to that red infrastructure that i showed you that indian had built 52 and 53 they built these two structures firozpur feeder and again this was to divert ravi and bias waters because in 1948 they did not have the capacity to divert waters they only had the capacity to shut down canals and now they are building one structure after the other in order to divert water and they made it clear in 1948 that we will divert all these rivers and we are not going to the international court we could have gone to the international court we once threatened them to go go to the international court and they came to their knees and now we are not threatening them with that we are now negotiating in terms and conditions with world bank wo karze lene ke chakkar mein pad gaye hukumat yaar dekho unko kuch kar lene do to hame karza mil jayega ab hukumat ka ye stance aa gaya bajaye ke aapki hukumat aapke logon ke liye case fight kare wo ab karze lene ke chakkar mein pad gaye aaj bhi yahi ho raha hai you have not changed much 52 to 54 ye headworks banaye in order to move divert satluj waters 55 again husaini wala headworks ke ko unhone abandon kiya hari ke headworks banaye aur satluj ka water divert kiya 55 byas ke upar unhone apni study shuru kar di ki byas ke upar apan ek bahut bada dam banayenge that was pung dam that dam would then completely shut byas river front into satluj and then into pakistan 1960 just before the treaty was signed pakistan ki ye situation thi ki aapka itna sa area abhi tak impact ho raha tha aur india is area ko divert karne ki capacity hasil kar chuka tha aur ye sab kuch it had made all these works so this was already on ground and this is 1960 just before 1960 treaty was not yet signed but india had gained full capacity to divert all the rivers that that they could and this is the time when we signed the treaty between 1948 and 1960 now compare these two maps this is 1948 and this is 1960 so even before the treaty was signed india had built so much you see they built all these things without a treaty and we did not apply sufficient force we did not do sufficient diplomacy we kept avoiding international courts and we kept chasing those loans that we thought we will get and make us rich that was the mentality we were following 
and this is so unfortunate and even today nobody tells you that how we wrecked our rivers and our economy before signing the treaty today you are told that indus treaty is one of the best treaties ever signed in the world now you see the history before the treaty was signed everything is done and then this this one more thing the only two major structures that india wanted to build to take full control of these rivers were two large dams one was pong dam which was to be built here uh, sorry which was to be built here on uh, bias river and the other one was thin dam which was to be built on ravi over here these were the only two structures large structures that they wanted to build but they could not build up, up until this time and when you sign the treaty you say okay you build those two as well you allow them to build them too and if you had not even if they had built all this thing if pakistan would have to taken the stance that they are violating the international rule of prior appropriation at least those two large dams could be could be stalled but there was a very unfortunate situation at this point in time it is said that at one point president ayub khan asked the world bank because world bank was wanted india and pakistan to sign a treaty and why world bank wanted this thing what were the stakes of world bank you know all these projects which were done in india who financed it mostly world bank and all the projects that pakistan was doing who was financing it mostly world bank so between the dispute of india and pakistan who was making money the world bank and these two stupid countries they were just playing in the hands of that financial institution and we are still playing the same way our leaders at that time did not have the guts and the vision to understand what india was doing what world bank was doing and where they are pushing their country to this is why they say when kings make mistakes nations suffer ayub khan at one point in time said to the world bank that you are asking me to sign a treaty to give three eastern rivers to india and keep three western rivers with pakistan but india has already taken the three eastern rivers what the hell was i should sign the treaty for the world bank said it was president eugene black he told mr yu khan that okay if you can go to war and win all this water back go ahead go to war and get that water but if you cannot go and win the war then you should sign this treaty and if you sign this treaty i will give you a lot of money to build two more dams in your country and then mr yu khan became interested oh wow i will get a lot of money to build two dams well that's that's where he decided okay we'll sign the treaty and there were people who advised yu khan not to do it there are people who begged him please don't do it you are going to wreck pakistan you still have a very good case in international court of law and india cannot cannot build two dams he says let them build two dams let them get the rivers but we are getting money and in getting that money ayub khan had one more uh, objective one of the dam being proposed was at the site of kalabag or tarbela so what is now tarbela dam could have been built at kalabag or could have been built at tarbela and tarbela was the area where uh, ayub khan came came from and uh, being a big person in that part of the world you know big persons have big rivalries and he could see that if he lets the project of tarbela dam go ahead and the site of tarbela is, uh, is accepted for for construction then it will drown a lot of lands of his rivals so that was the kind of menial personal politics which wrecked your country once again 
and that was one of the reasons Tarbela was built because that would draw quite a significant part of Haripur area and his rivals would lose their lands and you know that a landlord is nothing without his land money doesn't last very long so this is what happened to you you were forced into signing this treaty you were lured into signing this treaty and you were fooled into signing this treaty into signing this treaty and we were forced we were lured we were fooled and we should not be very proud of signing this treaty at least the young generation the current lot should know it what we did and don't be get carried away with the slogans that hey we signed a treaty and this is the treaty which saved pakistan i will tell you how much it saved you just bear with me this treaty allowed india to complete bhakra dam in 1963 built pon dam on river bias starting from 1961 completed in 1974 and then built another dam which was thin dam in line started in 1981 and completed in 2001 and those of you who are old enough would be able to recall that when traveling in the 90s over the ravi bridge before this motorway was made when you would be entering lahore i would be actually fascinated when i would be entering lahore crossing the ravi bridge because there used to be a, a very good atmosphere under the under the bridge there would be boats there would be mela laga hota tha wahan pe jino ka Barat Ali Barat Ali all this yes in 2001 after completion of thin dam ravi went dry now all you have in the ravi river is sewage and this is again the gift of the government of 1961 that we received in 2001 by having the complete shutdown of ravi river So again, when the kings make mistakes, the nation suffers, and we are suffering. So these are the post-treaty dams: Bhakra 1963, Pong 1974, Thin 2001. These three were in India, and here we are. We say this, this is our pride. We should be ashamed of it. Magla 1967, Tarbela 1976. But then. you hear so many stories so much poetry and prose and praise has been written for these two dams they say they are the dams which saved pakistan these are the two dams if they were not built pakistan would have been worse than somalia these are the two dams if they were not built pakistan would be a desert how far those statements are true